Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another video brought to you by SeniorCatWellness.com. In today's material, we'll briefly discuss how you can prepare in the most positive way for the death of your cat. We'll also talk about the aftermath, how you can heal, and how you can turn a bad day into many good days going forward. Before we press on, let's first take a look at our topic overview. Treat the sudden loss of a cat the same way you would a human death. Say goodbye. Acknowledge your grief and allow yourself to feel sad. At the same time, focus on the good times you spent with your cat. Seek support from friends, family, or counseling groups. Also consider donating to a cat shelter in memory of your cat. Before we continue, it's quite important to address the obvious. How can you prepare for your cat's death if the death is sudden and unexpected? Well, you can't. The core of this topic leans more to situations where your cat has been given a terminal diagnosis or a situation where you have a very old cat and the realization has set in that the end is near. In those scenarios, you could either have days, weeks, or even months to prepare. It's just important to make it clear that while many of the aftermath coping methods can apply across the board regardless of how your cat has passed away, true preparation requires time, and some cat owners, myself included, have not always been given that precious time. Before we take a look at today's first subsection, we'd like to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Your support means everything. These videos are nothing without viewership and engagement. And whether this is your first time joining us or if you've been here for years, you are family here. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. And we hope this video, in its own way, can help you with your grief and allow you to see those better days ahead. Thanks again, and we do look forward to seeing you in future videos. Now, let's get started. In this section, we'll briefly note several ways that you can cope in a positive manner. However, before we talk about those coping mechanisms, it must be stated that this is your grief, not my grief. You can grieve any way you see fit. I'm the very last person to tell you how to grieve. Your grief is not my grief, so please take everything you hear today as friendly and respectful advice, and nothing more. It's not our objective to browbeat anyone into grieving the way I want you to grieve. That needs to be made 100% clear. Just like we all have different cats that are unique and special and have their own wonderful personalities, we also have our own grief. And what gets you through those dark days might not work for the next person. This is advice, and it is nothing more. The first suggestion that we offer is to acknowledge your grief. On screen, you can see the five stages of grief. This isn't written in stone. It's really all about how you are wired. Some folks might enter a deep depression immediately. Other folks could live in the bargaining stage for six months. Here again, this is your grief. Our next piece of advice is to say goodbye. In order to move forward in a positive way, it's vital to reach some level of closure so that you're not perpetually stuck in a negative moment. For some people, the passing of time is enough. For others, some owners need to really look in the mirror and face things head on. One of the best ways to say goodbye is through the act of official burial, either on your own property or in a pet cemetery. Some owners select cremation, there is often beauty and finality, even though we don't always see it immediately. Another positive action that can be found is through the act of creating a memorial. As time goes along, memories of your cat will be all that you have, and slowly but surely those memories will make you smile again, rather than making you quite upset. There are many ways that you can honor your cat. Consider donating your pet's belongings to an animal shelter, you can also donate money in your cat's name to a shelter. For your own personal remembrance, a good book of photos is always a wonderful concept. A grave marker, flowers, perhaps some type of picture on the wall. This is one way to move on while still honoring your pet each and every day. And in your own way, sort of letting them know that they are always in your heart and in your thoughts. Another way to cope is to simply talk about it, share your feelings with others, with friends, family, neighbors, just anyone that you can trust. This is really for you more than anything else. Perhaps some feelings that you've kept bottled up, you can release to a confidant. 
if your listening ear is someone who actually knew your cat, well, that's even better. And finally, distract yourself. Life goes on, and that's a beautiful thing, a wonderful thing. Here again, time naturally has a way of pulling you out of grief. The world doesn't stop for your grief, and that is a blessing in the big picture. Distract yourself. As soon as you're ready, get back on the ball. Get back to living. Get back to making the most of your life, both personally and professionally. This isn't selfish. It's just reality. Once you feel that you're ready to take the next step, then by all means. There is no right way to grieve. Only positive advice and suggestions that can help. It can't be stressed enough. Your cat is your cat. And your grief is your grief. As a cat owner, I can simply say that I've dealt with the sudden loss of a cat and I was given roughly 48 to 72 hours to prepare for the death of another. Both hit me in very different ways. The sudden death event took the life of my five-year-old feline. The adventure ending, winding down of the grand journey, claimed the life of my 20-plus-year-old cat. Very different stages of life, very different endings to life. I use my personal example to say that not everyone grieves the same. And even within our own grief, different situations can prompt different forms of grief. It's not uncommon for someone to take the death of their pet quite well, and then a few years later feel almost unable to cope with the death of another pet. If you have children and other pets, and you are unable to cope, make sure that you are not behaving in an isolated fashion. When you're attempting to come to terms with the situation while unintentionally becoming disconnected from everyone else. As a way to handle your own grief, make sure that your children are okay, especially if you have young children. Helping them with their grief can serve as a positive way to help you come to terms and acceptance with your own pain. What about your other pets, your other cats? They could have lost a brother or a sister. Make sure your other animals are okay, not only from a day-to-day -day essential standpoint, but also from an emotional standpoint. It can be easy to somewhat divorce yourself from your other animals due to the grief that you are experiencing. One of the best ways to cope and move forward is to dedicate your time and energy into your remaining animals. This is also a beautiful way to honor the memory of your cat. Give your other cats the best life possible and do it in remembrance of their fallen buddy. My five-year-old cat left behind two of his brothers and one sister. One of the best ways to honor him is to do the most for the siblings that he left behind. And before we close things out today, guilt. Let's talk about guilt. Did you have to put your cat to sleep? It's very hard not to feel guilty, even if you know for a fact that the right decision was made. The coping methods we've recommended today can certainly help, as can the passing of time. If you know in your mind that you did the right thing, then you'll be fine. Your heart will heal, but do all you can to shed that guilt. In many cases, if we are honest with ourselves, the guilt is born out of selfishness, the desire to have your cat back with you. But if you did the right thing, especially upon vet recommendation, then allow time and coping outlets to help you to release that guilt. It's hard to see it at the time, but there are indeed worse things than death. Allowing your pet to suffer is not love. Sometimes love comes in the form of letting go and saying goodbye. And on that note, that will close things out for the video portion of today's material. However, if you'd like more concerning this very important and relatable topic to many, 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 we do invite you to visit us at SeniorCatWellness.com at the conclusion of today's presentation. There you will find a full-length and high-quality article dedicated to everything that we've talked about today and so much more. We hope you find the written material to be informative. Are you currently watching us off-site? If so, we do encourage you to click the initial link in the description box below. Said link will take you to all of the information. And until our paths cross again, and I certainly hope they do, we'd like to thank you once again for joining us today. Please have a wonderful day. All the best to you and yours, and we will talk to you later.